What's up, everyone? Welcome to this day in Philly Sports History for October 23rd, 2024. I'm your host, Jim Montgomery. Welcome to a Wednesday edition of the podcast. Happy Hump Day to everyone out there. Let's start with a few housekeeping notes. First, be sure to follow me on social media, Jimbo underscore Mont at Twitter and TikTok, at Philly Jimbo on Instagram. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, Jimbo underscore Mont. I've been mentioning the issues I'm having with Google Podcasts, so the best place, safest place to always get the podcast is on YouTube and help spread the word. If you're enjoying this, chances are someone else will as well, and we've slowly been growing this thing to a slow burn. Lots of fun things on the horizon, so stay tuned for that. Before we get into the podcast, I did want to mention, I uh, woke up today to the word that uh, legendary Dodgers pitcher Fernando Valenzuela has passed away. I only bring that up because he did pitch for the Phillies in 1994. Uh, not It was a solid year for the Phillies that year, but he was near the end of his career. But former Philly, uh, but legendary Dodger, Fernando Valenzuela, has passed away. I believe he was like 63. Um, very young. So uh, Fernando Valenzuela, former Philly, passed away. So condolences to his family. All right. To recap yesterday's question of the day, I asked you, are the Eagles back? Have they turned the corner? Kind of somewhat surprisingly, but maybe not. 65% of you said no, they have not turned the corner yet. They have not turned the season around. I don't know. I, like I said, I, I'm anxious to see what happens this this week with Cincinnati. Uh, but thank you, as always, for participating in the question today. The there will be another Sixers-related question later in the show. But 65% of you don't believe the Eagles have turned the season around. And I, I don't think they're in the elite team category right now. They certainly can get there. If the defense continues to play well like this and the offense can just show some consistency and knock it off to such slow starts, who knows? Uh, speaking of that offense, Nick Sirianni was on the WIP morning show yesterday and he was asked, are you a running team? And he said, damn right. I don't know what that means, if it means anything. I know if you think back to 2021 when he gave his whole flower growing roots and whatever speech and then they went on that run to make it to the playoffs, they did pound the rock a lot, but I don't know if that's what they're going to get back to. Um, I still would like to see more passes over the middle. That's uh, part of its game flow, I guess. I, I don't know. Really, what is the deal with the offense? It still looks semi-stagnant when they're not running the ball. So maybe that's what he means. They're going to get back to the bread and butter, run the ball, set up the pass that way. And, I mean, you have a decent line. You have Saquon Barkley. Why not? Uh, Paris Hand Paris Campbell has been released. No kind of it is what it is at that point. Uh, I know a lot of Giants fans talk about how terrible he was. So, I don't know if that is a precursor to more moves coming. It is getting ready to be the trade deadline. So who knows what Howie has up his sleeves with that. But looking ahead to this game, I saw this out of multiple places yesterday. Did not realize this. The Eagles have never won in Cincinnati. They're 0-4-1 all time in Cincinnati. I don't know what to make of that stat. Uh, I, ugh, I don't know. I mean, they're looking at the times they went out there. I think one time was uh, mid to late 70s. Uh, they were not as good. I know Carson Wentz went the one year the Eagles struggled and lost. You have the infamous Donovan McNabb not knowing that you could tie an NFL game. That was the tie out there. So I, I don't know. They always play them well, it seems like, when they're at home. But on the road, it's a different story. Uh Hopefully they can break out of that. But, I mean, it's a five-game sample, so it's not like out of 100 games, the Eagles have never won. It's five games. Uh, each team was different and in different spots of the season. But thought that was an interesting stat to pass along. We'll have more on this game as the week progresses. Be sure to check out my boys at the Clashing Conferences podcast. Football episode drops tomorrow. 
Baseball will drop on Friday. Uh, I have not heard word yet about basketball, but I know that should be coming very, very soon. So that is available wherever you get your podcast, as well as on YouTube. And a lot of new fun things going on at Philly Goat. First and foremost, they have the Ben Finklin uh, t-shirt, which is designed by Brian Garber of Wizards World of Tattoo. Pretty cool shirt. If you remember the Fanatic one they had where he's riding his ATV. This one, I believe Ben Franklin's on a horse. Uh, Pretty cool looking shirt. So go check that out at phillygoat.com. And I missed this yesterday. They are partnering, which, and I'm horrible, horrible with reading this spot because I forgot to mention who they're partnering with, but they are partnering. And if you've ever seen those backpack coolers or the duffel bag coolers, Philly Goat is partnering with them for a couple uh, Eagles-inspired coolers. Duffel bag coolers, backpack coolers, and of course the Freedom Funnel. This thing is awesome. I might have to get one. Basically, it's an eagle that funnels your beer down uh, for tailgates and things like that. But all of that is available on phillygoat.com. The duffel bag cooler, the backpack cooler, the Freedom Funnel, and the Ben Finklin t-shirt. So go to Philly Goat. Check it out. I I really like the duffel bag cooler because I I know with going to the pool over the summer, I I have one of those... uh, box coolers that it's kind of soft but waterproof and it's just a pain to carry but a duffel bag cooler i feel like would be good even the backpack just throw it on throw some white claws or uh, state sides in the back and and you're good to go so go check that out be sure to use the promo code jim montgomery for 10 percent off your order that's phillygoat.com promo code jim montgomery to take 10 percent off of your order all right sixers open the season tonight Without PG, without Joel Embiid, kind of takes the luster off of our old pal Doc Rivers' return to Philadelphia for the first time. I don't know. I mean, Joe's out Friday and Sunday, too. They say it's all part of the plan. I know a lot of people are upset about this, but hear me out here. And I will preface this with saying I am an OG process guy. Still one of the very few that's trusting the process for this long. In fact, the shirt I have on underneath is my Trust the Process shirt in honor of the process today. So here's my thought process. I know a lot of people are pissed off and it's happened to me when I've gone down to games with the kids and we find out as we're pulling into the parking lot, Joe's not playing. I get people who paid money thinking the season opener, Joe's going to play, PG's going to play. So I, I, I really do. I understand that. Sorry, I had a tickle in my throat. I had to take a sip of coffee. But we have so, for the entire duration of Joe's career, it's been get him, like he starts off gangbusters and then gets hurt. They have a plan. They're going to need a plan. Everybody's on board with this, getting him healthy and having him ready and, and being as healthy as possible heading into the postseason. I, I don't think that there's any conspiracy here. I don't think he got hurt in the Olympics. I think this was always part of their plan. They didn't announce it until yesterday, and I know people are pissed off about that. But again, you kind of read the writing on the wall. But where I'm saying I'm trusting the process on this one is rest him early in the season. Kind of ease him into playing. Like, you know how he's going to play. So if resting him three games to start the season, uh, two of them on the road is what's going to do it, I'm okay with that. And I don't want to say tonight's a scheduled loss as Doc Rivers, ironically enough, who's coming back today is. But a game here in October is not worth whatever we're going to need come March or April, hopefully into May. So I, I, I'm okay with this plan. They, it seems like they have a plan, and I, I, I have to trust, and I know a lot of people ha, have ripped him and been hard on him, but if you look what he's done since he's been sort of the GM or a president of basketball, whatever his title is, Daryl Morey has done a phenomenal job with this team, cleaning up the crap he was left with. So I trust that he has a plan in place for Joe between him, Nick Nurse, Elton Brand, the training staff, Joe himself. I trust that. So if that means not seeing Joe for the first three games of the season, so be it. 
I mean, it's October. And yes, you don't want to get yourself into a deep hole. But we saw when he came back and was not 100% last year, heading down the stretch and into the playoffs, they won eight games in a row to end the season. So I'm okay with this. Ease into it. This might be, I, I, it might come off as I'm doubling down on my prediction that they're going to make it to the conference finals. It might be doubling down on the fact that I may be the lone person who believes in the process still. And I'm okay with that because when they make it out of the second round, you can thank me later and say you heard it here first. So I'm okay with it. Obviously, I would love to see the full team play tonight. But they're holding out PG. Probably more precautionary. If it was playoffs, I bet he would play. Again, it is October 23rd. There is no reason to to put people in positions that make sure everybody's 100%. That's all I'm saying. Uh, You might disagree, and that is today's question of the day. Do you agree with the plan to set Joe for the first three games of this season? 267-495-8531, that'll get you in. Tell me the truth, too. Do you think there's more to it? Do you think he was never shouldn't have played in the Olympics, maybe, and he was never fully recovered from the knee injury? I don't know. I think he's fine. I think it's all part of the plan. And I'm all for it. But what do you think? Do you agree with the plan as it as we know it now for Joe and it's sitting out the first three games of the season? 267-495-8531 will get you in. I'm anxious to see your comments on this one. Rip me if you have to because I know I caught a lot of slack last, last night, yesterday, for my prediction that they will be a three seed and make it to the conference finals. Um, lots of... Uh, multiple gifts I should say of or gifs whatever they are of Lucy and Charlie Brown with the football I get it I'm willing to take it but let me know rip me tell me how wrong I am on the Sixers tell me the process ended years ago and I need to get rid of this shirt and move on but I'm still trusting the process I'm an OG member will st- I will ride this train until it crashes um, likely probably sometime in April but we'll get to that when it comes to it But do you agree with the plan so far, knowing that Joe's not going to play the first three games of the season? 267-495-8531, that will get you in. And and Einstein or whoever gets credit for the quote, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing multiple times and expecting different results. Guess what? They're switching it up now. They're resting them at the beginning of the season instead of having it be late February, early March when they're battling for playoff position And they're going to need him. So I'd rather him sit in October than February and March. But let me know what you think on the Back to the Future voice and text line. All right, the Flyers. Pretty much reminded us yesterday and and reaffirmed, I guess, that this team is in the middle of a rebuild. Uh, Very out of sync. Lost 4-1 to to the Capitals yesterday. The crowd was booing. And I don't think they were booing because they lost. And... I have something in the works here, and I don't I don't know how I'm going to do it yet, but the different levels and different types of boo. This was a boo not because they were playing bad. It was, and I watched. Uh, it was kind of. It was. It had a Hall of Fame meeting, and I was doing different things uh, for different projects and things like that. But I kind of was watching, and they just kept, had lackluster, uninspired play. And I think that it was where the boos were coming from. They were coming from the fact that they they weren't putting any effort they were making silly mistakes and just uncharacteristic things so the power play they gave up two shorthanded goals you can't do that that's like hockey one-on-one you have a man advantage and i get sometimes you give up a goal but you can't give up two shorthanded goals the penalty kill was solid um, as it was last year but the power play is a mess right now Uh, Mishkov did have an assist, but they just seem out of sync. Not long to wait until they're back at it. They're down in D.C. I guess it was a home and home with the Capitals. So they're in D.C. this evening. Hopefully we can see some sort of a... I mean, Arison didn't play bad. I mean, two shorthanded goals. You can't necessarily blame him for uh, both of them. Uh, It's just hopefully they can just show some sort of effort Uh, Maybe it's good that they started out on the West Coast. All right, today we got a quadruple header. Very, very rare quadruple header for you today because this is a huge day 
in Philly's postseason history. Maybe not the greatest day in Philly's postseason history, but four huge things happened on this day in Philly's postseason history. One great, three not so great. Let's start with the first. In 1993, for only the second time in Major League Baseball history, and to date only the second time, it's only happened twice, the World Series ended on a walk-off home run. Yes, today is the anniversary of Joe Carter's three-run homer in the bottom of the ninth to beat the Phillies 8-6 to six and have the Blue Jays win the World Series. Ruined many of our childhoods. Introduced us all to the harsh reality of being a Philadelphia sports fan. And yes, that happened on this day back in 1993. Go to Philly Goat. They have a shirt to commemorate it. Joe Carter ruined my childhood as well. Then we move on to 2008. Phillies lost Game 2 of the World Series 4-2 to the Rays down in Tampa. They left a lot of runners on base in that game. And I remember just questioning, maybe they got lucky to win Game 1. Fortunately for the Phillies, it was the only game that they lost that World Series. But still not a good day. They came back to Philly tied 1-1. We all know, though, they did not go back to Tampa. And then it gets worse. In this on this day in 2010, the Phillies lost three to two to the Giants in Game Six of the NLCS to be, be eliminated. Would not return to the World Series for the third straight year. So in '93, Joe Carter hit a home run. 2008, Brett Myers blew up, and the Phillies lost to the Rays four to two in the World Series. And then in 2010, Phillies lost to the Giants to eliminate themselves from. Going back to the World Series for the third time. But the silver lining on this day, and I know this might not make a lot of folks happy based on the way this season ended, but in 2022, it was Bedlam at the Bank, 4-3. to Bryce Harper with the two-run shot in the bottom of the eighth for the 4-3 to win over the Padres to send the Phillies to the World Series. So as I mentioned, huge day in Phillies postseason history. 93, Joe Carter hit the home run to end the Phillies' magical run that season. 2008, the only game they lost in the World Series that year. 2010, they get eliminated by the Giants. But the saving grace, one of the greatest moments in Phillies' postseason history, Bedlam at the Bank happened on this day in 2022. All right, today we're going to start our Philadelphia Sports Hall of Fame inductee spotlight Over the next few days, we're going to be highlighting all of the candidates or all of the inductees who are inducted into the 2024 Hall of Fame class. Today, we're going to start with A.W. Tillinghast. And you might not know him, but you know a lot about what he's accomplished. He's a Philadelphia born golf course architect. And he's designed over 300 courses in his life, including 24 that hosted over 50 majors, including eight PGA championships, 17 U.S. Opens, and nine U.S. Amateur Championships. And here's uh, just a list of some of the courses that he's helped either design, redesign, collaborated on. His... His, he's got his hand and, and his fingerprints all over these courses. Uh, Buttersall, Beth Page Black, Medina, Wingfoot, Philadelphia Cricket Club, Pine Valley, San Francisco Country Club, just to name a few. Uh, I think he's also responsible for the Baltimore Country Club. Uh, just huge, huge in the area of golf course design. Uh, he actually got his start, though, as a news or a magazine reporter for golf he was one of golf i think it was golf digest first golf reporters Uh, but again you know him for his golf course design if you ever played on a course with an island green you can thank tilling has for that uh you ever wonder why there's bunkers guarding a a, a green tilling has was responsible for strategically placing bunkers along golf course uh ever miss a putt bad because you read it wrong he was very much a big proponent of, of undulating greens, so the little curves and dives and whatever. So that was uh, A.W. Tillinghast. He was also known for having sort of narrow beginning of the fairways and then having it open up, but then that's where he placed his bunkers to make it more strategic. And even if you think it's an easy shot, you might have an out-of-bounds over here. You might have another bunker over here. You might have some water 
all going into an island green. Um, but he liked to test golfers and his fingerprints, like I said, are all over courses that we see uh, today. He was a pretty good player too, played in the 1910 U.S. Open, played in eight U.S. Amateurs Open. Uh, but A.W. Tillinghast, uh, golf course architect, is today's Philadelphia Sports Hall of Fame inductee spotlight. And just a quick little fun fact, was not able to get a full confirmation on this. However, rumor has it, and legend has it, I guess you could say, that he was in the foursome the day that the term birdie for a one under par shot was coined. A guy in his group hit his second shot within inches of the cup and said, that's a bird of a shot. And from there, they started calling it a birdie uh, because back in the early, late 1800s, early 1900s, uh, uh, so calling something a bird actually meant it was a great shot, something positive. So that was a bird of a shot, led to birdie. And legend has it that A.W. Tillinghast was in that foursome down at Atlantic City Country Club when that coin or that term was coined. So A.W. Tillinghast is today's Philadelphia Sports Hall of Fame inductee spotlight. Obviously, he is no longer with us, so he will not be at the ceremony. But any information you want or need on any of the other inductees, including ticket information, donations, however you want to help, you want to volunteer, all of that is in the description. Uh, but you can go and check that out and get a list. But over the next few days, we will be spotlighting the Hall of Fame, Philadelphia Sports Hall of Fame inductee class of 2024. Today, we started with A.W. Tillinghast. He was a bird of a golf course designer. On this day in 2022, it was Bedlam at the Bank. In 2010, Phil's eliminated by the Giants. 2008, they lost to the Rays 4-2, the only game they lost that World Series. And in 93... A day that will forever haunt me. I still remember thinking that that ball was foul until I saw the replays and saw it wasn't even close to being foul. Uh, but Joe Carter ended the 93 Phillies magical run with a walk-off three-run homer. The only chance, or the only second, only the second time that that has happened in Philadelphia or Major League Baseball history. I'm all over the place today because I'm still trusting the process. Uh, and for those of you who are keeping score at home, 1960 Bill Mazeroski Game 7 was the other walk-off homer to end the World Series. Sixers tonight, let me know your thoughts. Should I be trusting the process? Are you okay with the plan so far to, to rest and, and manage Joe's health? I'm all in because what we've done in the past has not worked. So why not sit him out for a few games to start the season? He, nobody cares about the MVPs and all NBAs and anything like that anyway. But go ahead. Get on the Back to the Future voice and text line 267-495-8531. Tell me how crazy I am. We'll have more on the eagles Bengals. Hopefully they can get their first win ever in Cincinnati. This has been This Day in Philly Sports History for October 23rd, 2024. My name is Jim Montgomery. Go have yourselves a Wednesday. And until next time, I'll see you when I see you.